Okay, so for this demonstration I'm going to be reviewing the map import command. First thing we're going to want to do is edit the drawing settings and make sure that the drawing is being projected into the true coordinate system. For this demonstration we're bringing in GIS data uh, within the city of Charlotte or our project site is within the city of Charlotte. So let's set the coordinate system to NAD83, North Carolina State Plain, US Foot, or NC83F, and we'll hit OK. Now let's initiate the map import command. And here we go. If you expand the files of type, you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of files that could be imported with this command. For this demonstration we're just going to be importing Esri shape files or SHP files. And let's go ahead and select those files. So we've got sewer gravity mains, sewer manholes, and water lines. Hit OK. And here's a good self-check to make sure coordinate systems are matching up. And we're going to want to bring in the data or the attribute data or object data that's associated with the line work and the points and everything from ArcGIS. And to do that, you just check this, create object data. We also want to import polygons as closed polylines. And then we'll hit OK. So now this is going to run for a little bit. Um, one thing you can do is limit what you're importing by like a window selection or if you have an object that kind of outlines your project boundary, you can select that. I failed to do that for this demonstration just to show you what's going on. So those shape files actually cover the entire county that Charlotte is in. So it's going to bring in all of that, all of the sewer manholes, the mains, uh, the sewer mains, and the water lines throughout the entire county. And once this is done importing, well, I'll show you the extents. And how we can limit that import. Alright, let's zoom extents to see everything. And since we set the coordinate system for this file, we now have access to the geolocation tools as well. So let's turn on the aerial. And this is just a really good self check just to make sure things are lining up right where they should be in the real world. Um, Everything is projected to real world coordinates. So provided. Um, the aerial lines up or shows up behind the lines that we just imported. Typically everything, most of the time everything will be fine. Sometimes if your aerial, if it's not projected correctly or if the coordinate systems aren't matching, your aerial image will actually be somewhere completely off the site. So it's just a really good self-check to make sure things are where they should. So here's Charlotte. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and try to find our project extents. So right now we're downtown in downtown Charlotte. I'm just going to draw a rectangle that kind of outlines the approximate location of our project analysis. Turn that off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the GIS data that we imported. I'm going to use a command select similar by right clicking, selecting the command select similar, and it's going to select all the all the line work, all the nodes, everything we just imported, and I'm going to go ahead and erase it. 
zooming out, you can see all the all the extra data that that I brought in that I really didn't need. All right, so let's zoom extents again just to get our project boundary, and we're going to initiate the map import command again. Gonna go back to those same locations, select the same files, hit OK. And here in the spatial filter, you could use the current display or you could define the window. So I'm gonna snap to the corners of my project boundary box, make sure I'm importing the object data as well. going to import polygons as closed polylines, hit OK. This is going to run a lot faster because it's limiting, see? <laughs> it's limiting what's being brought in. So zoom extents, and there you go. We've got all the utility information that we need that's specific to the project area. And now our file size is going to be quite smaller than what it would have been if I had all the county data embedded in this file. So again, I just wanted to double check that the aerial lines up, and again, this is just a really good self-check. So before we start getting into the design or the analysis, I just want to make sure things are lined up right. So if we select these lines, see we've got a water line, we've got all the object data associated with it. We've got diameters, the materials, uh, the years, um, the lengths of the pipe, and so on and so forth. Here we've got a sewer gravity main. Uh, appears that there wasn't a whole lot of object data associated with it or assigned to it. We've got the size at least, which is 8 inches, but a lot of times um, a lot of the counties will actually give you the uh, invert elevations as well um, and some additional extended data that, um, that's, that they like to embed in the manholes, the nodes, the the water lines, the sewer mains, the storm lines, whatever you're bringing in, but they, a lot of counties are, are typically pretty good with coding a lot of this information in ArcGIS. Let's select one of the manholes, which comes in as a point, and don't have a whole lot of information here, but again, a lot of counties are pretty good with, with including a lot of that additional information.